And <laughs> you said he's as powerful as he is. Yeah. Define power for me. Power being, so from a monk's perspective, perspective, the greatest power is to be self-controlled, to be able to train the mind and energy to focus it exactly where you want it and when you want it to be. You are completely detached and undeterred from external ups and downs. You're able to navigate anything that seems tough, challenging, fun, excitement with the same amount of being equipoised and balanced and equanimity without being too excited in pleasure or being too depressed in pain. But knowing how to navigate every situation, to me, that's great strength and great power. Um, I heard in one of your talks, you were saying that if you look at um, a, a literal lifeline, a heartbeat, yeah. for instance, you know, it's, it's up and it's down and people have this sense that something like enlightenment would be that um, the equanimity forever yeah. and just an even keel. And you said, but what, what does that resemble? It resembles a flat line when you die. Correct. So what is it like, what I love about you is you sort of went into the wilderness of being a monk, but you brought it back to the real world. Because when you talk about a monk, you talk about them being detached. And that, to me, seems like the only real way to have that sort of mm -hmm. super even keel existence, which is not appealing to me personally. Mm -hmm. So if you're bringing back that notion of power, of having control over yourself, not letting your emotions take you everywhere, but knowing that life is, is the series of ups and downs, what does that power look like when it's brought back? Absolutely. And actually, that's the whole aim of monk training. It's, it's more like a training system then it is a lifelong commitment. It is bringing that mindset into the real world where you get to test it. Now, I got to do that for real when I left being a monk around five years ago. And when I left, it was like, oh my God, I'm in the real world now again, real world. I have to think about how to apply all this. I'm gonna test for real all this stuff that I've learned. And I was scared, like I was nervous, I was anxious and all those things that I've been trained not to be rushed back because for the first time in my life, I had to really put it into practice. And I love that feeling. I'm so glad that I had to do that. So for me, actually, the mindset is completely trainable to bring into the real world. That's, that's what I'm trying to do. And, and what it allows you to do is it allows you to gain clarity and perspective when you need it. Because you know when you can just take a bird's eye view from something. You know when you need to get close into something. You know when you need to pull back from something. There's a beautiful verse in the Bhagavad Gita that says that detachment is not that you own nothing. Detachment is that nothing owns you. And, and I love it because to me that summarizes detachment in a way that it's not usually explained. Usually people see detachment as being away from everything. Mm. Actually the greatest detachment is being close to everything and not letting it consume and own you. And that's real power, that's real strength. How many people do we know that have had fame and then that fame has ruined them? So for me, that definition of detachment is possible to practice even in the real world, rather than saying, oh, I'm just gonna have a really simple life, I'm just gonna have nothing in life. What was the best part about being a monk? The best part about being a monk is that your morning routine and practices are so powerful that you can actually aspire for more incredible values in life. Because your mind is clear. Because your mind is clear and you have that ability to have more clarity so you can seek that which is, which is higher. So I'll give an example of what I mean. Define, yeah. is that what you're about to define? Yeah. What is higher? Yes, exactly. So for me, being able to overcome ego, being able to overcome envy, being able to overcome jealousy, being able, able to overcome the negative of competitive state. There's a positive competitive state and there's a negative competitive state. Today, when people are looking on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube, all you're looking at is, oh, she got that many likes, or he got that many likes, she got engaged, or he got married, or, oh my God, look at her body, or look at that. And it's like, that stuff's destroying us inside. Envy, jealousy, ego, greed. To be able to have enough clarity to purify yourself of those things is gonna alleviate the biggest anxieties and depressions of our time and mental health problems. And, and we know that. We know that because all the mental health research today suggests that things like isolation, overexposure, we now can have more pain consumption in one day because of what we're exposed to than the pain we would have had in a lifetime. That's huge. 
Like that, that's ridiculous to think that in one day, because of the media, news and social media, we consume more negative than we did in a lifetime. For me, being able to have time, energy and clarity to focus on self-purification, that is the best thing about being a monk. Because you have that time, reflection and a process and an environment that only allows you to become more purified of those things. So if I was the interviewer that I wanted to be...